Welcome to the National Drug Screening Video Blog Series. Today we're going to be discussing what gets employers in trouble in regards to drug testing. Joining us today is Mr. Joe Riley, President of National Drug Screening. Uh, he's an industry expert, he's been in the industry since 1993. He's a very well known expert in a lot of areas of drug testing. And he's going to share some of his experiences over the years on what gets employers in trouble and how to make sure that doesn't happen. So welcome to the show, Joe. Thank you, Tom. That's a great topic, and I'm happy to be here to discuss it with you. Yeah, I know you're kind of smiling there because you can think back, I'm sure, about a lot of issues and, uh, and situations that, that come up and that have created issues. So as far as a lot of the issues out there, what are some of the biggest mistakes that you see employers making uh, on a regular basis that lead to problems or liability issues? Sure, Tom. We see a lot of mistakes, unfortunately, that employers make with their drug testing program. One of the biggest ones is that they don't follow their own company policy with regard to drug-free workplace, or they're doing drug testing and they don't even have a company policy. So that's really important. When they have a policy, they got to follow it. And when something comes up and there's an issue, particularly like a positive drug test, they really need to go back and read what does their policy say. And if they're doing drug testing and they don't have a policy, the question all, always comes up, well, so-and-so is now positive, what do we do now? Right, and I, and I think we get that question, I've heard that quite often, and that's the question we ask, you know, what does your policy say? And many times they don't know, and that's, that's really a big challenge. Or, right. or they come up and they want to do something outside the policy. Have you seen that that's an issue from time to time? Maybe they have that one employee that they really don't want to let go, and all of a sudden they've come back with a positive test. And, you know, how, how do they go about you know, dealing with that situation? Yeah, so that's a, that's a tough one. So you got a really good employee, they do a good job, and you do a random drug test, and that particular employee comes up positive. And the company policy is pretty much zero tolerance, and it says if you're positive, immediate termination. And now they don't want to terminate this particular person because they do a great job. Mm -hmm. Well, they're going to run into some problems at that point in time because maybe in the past they've terminated someone else for the same exact reason, the same exact type of drug test, and now they're not terminating this particular mm -hmm. person. So you've got to follow the policy and you've got to put some thought into the policy right up front when it's created because they could have put in the policy a second chance provision. And then this way they can always give somebody a second chance and they got to follow it consistently but you got to give a lot of thought to that zero tolerance situation because if you've got some really good employees and you never know, because it can be anybody, you never know who's going to test positive. And then all of a sudden you got to get rid of this person, but you don't want to get rid of them. Right. And that's, that's really a, a tough situation that they get into quite often. You know, so what are some of the consequences that employers tend to run into? Because you've worked as an expert witness quite often sure. in a variety of different cases. So what are some of the consequences that come up from some of these mistakes that maybe employers make from time to time? Well, there's, there's a host of them. So just a couple examples. In, in one example, you know, a company wanted to drug test somebody because they were suspicious of something, but they didn't really document that they were suspicious, they just called it a random test, mm. and their policy required laboratory testing at a certified lab, but they did an instant rapid test instead of that, mm -hmm. and a coworker was reading the result, and the coworker reported it to someone else, who reported it to someone else, and before long, there were 12 people in the organization that knew that someone tested positive on an initial screen and an initial screen can actually be a false positive. And I hate to use the word for false positive because if the testing is done properly, at a laboratory we do an initial screen, then we do a confirmation test to verify that initial screen, and then we review that result by a medical review officer or an MRO, there are no false positives. But when you don't do it the way you're supposed to do it, and there's a breach of confidentiality and we don't follow the need to know, mm -hmm. okay? A lot more people knew than needed to know <laughs> there can be issues. And that was a case that um, the company paid out a couple hundred thousand dollars in damages. 
So it's something that can be very costly if they don't if they don't follow through the program and do the right things. Exactly. Let me let me point out another example, is that the medical review officer in the process is a licensed physician that reviews every drug test result and takes into account prescribed medications that somebody may be on, because they may be they may have been positive at the laboratory, but they have a legitimate prescription that overturns that result to a negative. Where we see problems is in companies where the HR team wants to play doctor and they want to be the medical review officer. And they're now asking the employee, well, what prescriptions are you on? What specific drugs and medications are you taking? And they start Googling and say, okay, well, that medication may have caused this positive or may not have caused this positive. And, and those HR people are not physicians. They're not trained to know what drugs cause a positive drug test result. That's a function of a medical review officer. And that's another case that led to a lawsuit where there were HIPAA violations mm -hmm. and there were ADA violations and the settlement was over $750,000. Wow. So it sounds like it can be very costly for mistakes that you just sometimes don't consider. And I think it's very important for our employers to make those right decisions. And I think one of that comes back to what you'd mentioned in the very beginning was about the drug-free workplace policy and going back to that. So what are some of the key components that they need to have to make sure that they put things in place so these things don't happen? Yeah, so Tom, great question. The key components and really to have a good effective policy is number one, to take a lot of thought when it's being implemented or maybe today you're revising it because you see that the policy really you know, isn't all that comprehensive. So. Mm -hmm. We, we want to look at the policy and, and say, okay, what's prohibited? What's the prohibited behaviors? You know, illegal drugs are prohibited. Use of alcohol in the workplace is prohibited, okay? And who's the authoritative person in charge of the policy? We also, we often call that a designated employer representative or, or a DER. And in the program, do we educate our employees on what the policy says? And do we train our supervisors on what the policy says, and we do we train those supervisors on reasonable suspicion testing, signs and symptoms that an employee may be under the influence of drugs or alcohol while working? And then do we offer some type of assistance in the program where an employee has access to get confidential assistance if they have a substance abuse problem? And the policy should identify what drugs we're testing, and what happens if you test positive? What happens if you refuse to test? And again, when a situation occurs, the HR folks should go and look at the policy. This is what we do, not just do stuff out of the blue without going back to our documented policy. And then follow, finally, with the drug testing, we, we need to follow our procedures. We need to use a certified laboratory. We need to use a certified medical review officer. And use a professional company, often called a TPA or a third party administrator, to help guide your drug testing program. And those are the key components. And that, that's great. I think that's something that if, if all the companies followed that, there'd be a lot, lot less issues uh, going on out there. And, you know, one of the things that, that you mentioned led me to think of uh, a specific industry that we see some issues in from time to time. For instance, like the staffing industry, things along those lines, where they may be using that instant drug testing and making decisions, not even playing the role of the MRO, but maybe making a decision based on whatever the instant test result is. And that can be a significant uh, issue as well. Yeah, it's really important, particularly with these rapid instant testing devices, they're okay to, to use to rule out negatives, but when you don't have a negative result, mm -hmm. it has to go to the laboratory. You can't read a non-negative or a positive on an instant rapid device and say, we're not hiring you or we're terminating you. Because again, as I mentioned earlier, that could be from a prescribed drug. Now, some of these staffing companies may have done hundreds or thousands of tests and never had a problem. But it only takes one problem to get that $750,000 lawsuit 
Exactly. And have those type of problems. Excellent. Well, Joe, I really appreciate you joining us today. I'd like to thank Mr. Joe Riley for uh, for coming on the the, uh, the show today and sharing some of his expertise, especially with uh, some of the cases he's dealt with. I know lots of interesting ones beyond what we could just share today. But just understand that if you're an employer and you make mistakes, it can be very costly. And the best way to do that is to have that good drug-free workplace program, have the policies in place, the supervisor training, all of those components, and working with an organization that can help you do that. So. So thanks for joining us and sharing that with us today. Um, we also like to invite you to go to our NDS blog on the nationaldrugscreening.com website, where it's the authoritative source for all answers to drug testing related questions. You'll see other videos, articles, current information uh, that'll help you answer the questions and hopefully avoid making those mistakes for yourselves. So thanks for joining us and see us on the next video.